Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at Newton's method, which is a numerical algorithm for finding ruts. And so in this video, we have two main goals. First, we want to look at the geometric interpretation of the algorithm. So there's really a series of pictures that will help describe exactly what we need to do to implement this algorithm. After that, we're actually going to program the technique in Mathematica. Now to get started, we'll look at why we actually need this algorithm in the first place. So here I have an example of a function. My function is 2 sine of x minus 3x plus 2. We've seen earlier that I can use the solve command to find the roots. And in this case, I'm trying to find the roots with solve. And I'm also looking at the plot. And this tells us two main things. One, from the plot, we can see there should be a root. There should be a root somewhere here between 1 and 2, right where that function crosses the x-axis. However, when I use the solve command, I get an error. It basically says that the system cannot be solved with the methods available to solve. I can't just use some algebraic process to analytically solve this equation to find the roots. So instead, I need to use a numerical technique. So we're going to use Newton's method. Now let's take a look at the geometric interpretation of this algorithm. Okay, so Newton's method works by choosing some starting value, x sub naught. So if we're going to let x sub naught equal negative 4. Now in general, we would choose this to be close to the root. But in this case, we're going to start a little farther away so we can really see the graphical representation of the algorithm. All right, so once we choose our starting value, we then find the tangent line at that starting value. So I go up to my function up here, and I calculate the tangent line. I can sketch the tangent line. It might look something like that guy. And then what I do is I find the root of the tangent line. So I see where the, that tangent line crosses the x-axis. So I start with x sub 0. The root of that first tangent line is going to be my x1. And I'm basically going to repeat the process. Now I'm going to go back up to the function at x1 and find the tangent line there. And then I will find that tangent line. And where that crosses the x-axis, I'll have another value. That will be my next x value, my x2. From that spot, I'll find a tangent line. It will lead me to an x3. Go down to my function here. And if I just keep following those values, those x values will get closer and closer and closer to the root. So that's the general graphic description of the algorithm. But now we need to write some equations down to actually calculate these values and find a way to program it. So we basically started at x sub 0, and we need to find a tangent line at x sub 0. Well, we have no equation for that. In general, the equation of a line looks like y minus y sub naught equals m, the slope, times x minus x sub naught. Now in this case, because we have some function, there's my curve, my y equals f of x. If I want the equation of the tangent line, well then my y sub naught value will just be the function evaluated at x sub zero, x sub naught. The slope will be the derivative of my function evaluated at x sub naught. And so now I have an equation for that tangent line. Next, what I need to do is find the roots of the tangent line. There will only be one root because it is a line. And so how do I find that value? Well, I'm basically saying where is the y value of that tangent line equal to 0? So I plug in 0 for the tangent line value, and I'm trying to solve for x. So when I plug in 0 and I add this f of x sub naught to the other side here, I get 0 is equal to f prime of x sub naught times x minus x sub naught plus f of x sub naught. And so I'm trying to find the x values that give me this y value of 0 to find the roots of the tangent line. So now I just need to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to subtract my f of x sub naught to the left-hand side. I'm going to divide through by my f prime of x sub naught. And lastly, I'm going to add my x sub naught value. And this should be equal to the x value, which is the root of the tangent line. And from my picture, this is what I wanted x1 to be. So this is really the equation that's going to drive our algorithm. Once I find x1, I'm going to repeat this process for x2. So you can imagine x2 would then be the same equation, but replacing all the x sub naughts with x1s. So negative f of x1, f prime of x1, plus x1. And so now I have kind of a way to construct all these x values. All right, now let's go back to Mathematica and see if we can program this guy up. So here I have my function defined and my starting x sub 0 value. So now i got to find my x1 value. Now we've seen that our equation is basically x1 is equal to negative f of x0 divided by f prime of x0 
plus x0. So if I evaluate this cell, I should get my x1 value. Now we can look up the picture to see if negative 0.4 makes uh, sense for an x1. If I started at negative 4, and I found the tangent line here and follow it to where it intersected the x-axis, somewhere in this neighborhood, negative 0.4 seems like a reasonable answer. All right, so now I have my x1. Now how do I find my x2? Well, I could change this to x2 and then change all my x naughts to x1. But that'd be pretty time consuming. Instead, what I can do is store my x1 value to x0. And if I do that and then rerun the cell, it will reevaluate this expression, but using x1 now. And so I could run this cell. And then if I run it again, now it's using my new value for x0 and generating out an x2 value of 1.69344. And if I put my cursor and hit shift enter again, I get a new value, again a new value. And if I just keep putting my cursor in the cell and rerunning it, I should get closer and closer and closer to my root. At some point, the value has stopped changing after I keep running the cell. I assume that means that I've gotten close enough to the root. I can verify that in Mathematica using the find root command which does also use a numerical technique like Newton's, but probably more advanced, a little more complicated. But in that case, I could put in my function and put in my initial value of negative 4 as well, and mathematical return that same value, 1.31095. So it looks like just by rerunning the cell, I've implemented Newton's method. Now, of course, in general, I don't want to have to put my cursor into a cell and hit shift enter over and over and over again. So how can I really trim that up and, and make it more code like? Well, instead of running my first line and then storing the x value to x0, I could instead get rid of that piece and just uh, store this expression for my new x1, just store that directly to x0. Now, as a mathematical equation, this would actually make no sense, that these values would not be actually equal. However, in programming, I'm running this value with x sub 0 in it, and I'm storing that back to x0. So that's really how you should view this equation. So now if I rerun my initialization cell, starting that x0 back at negative 4, put my cursor in here, I can keep rerunning it. So I can see that I am getting the same values. But now what I'd really like to do is just build a table of these values. And instead of putting some sort of range of i values, because I'm not really using i in this case, I can just put a number, like 10, for example. And now it will, it will run that argument, that first argument, 10 times. So once again, I'll reevaluate my initialization cell. And now I'll run my table cell. And sure enough, now I get all those values. I can see my x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. And basically anything higher than x5 is returning that same value for the root. So this is one way that I can run the code. Another way I could run that code is instead of using the table command, to use the do command. And in this context, it's basically going to do the same thing as table. It's just not going to build the list. So in this case, if I ran my initialization cell, once again, starting x0 at negative 4, and then I ran my command line with the do command in it, it's gone through that algorithm 10 times. It just hasn't returned that x sub not value. So if I typed x sub not in a new cell and ran it, now I can see that correct value is stored. So the do command does the same thing as a table. It just doesn't actually build the list, but it does iterate that algorithm 10 times. One final way that I could also go ahead and program this using the table command is instead of just restoring all these values to x0, I could actually make the, the full list with the x0 and the x1 and all those values as well. Um, in general, this would be my, my zero value. And it, if I ran it, it would generate x1. And if I put in x1, it would generate x2 and so far. In general, if I plugged xi in to all these spots, and here I'm using subscripts, so that's uh, control with a subtraction symbol. And I'm putting my values in. If I put x sub i in, I would my output should be x sub i plus one, right? So if I inputted x sub three, the output should give me the x four value. And so in this case, I'm just going to clear my x in general, and then I'm going to initialize by defining x sub zero to be negative four, like we've been using. And now I don't want to run this table 10 times, but now I'd rather have i sub 0, or i go from 0 to, we'll say, 10 in this case. And now if I hit Shift-Enter, 
we get that same output. Now the only difference from this version of table versus the previous version of table is now if I were to type x sub 6, for example, I can see that the x sub 6 value is actually stored to that name. All right, so to recap, we looked at Newton's method, we looked at a geometric interpretation of the algorithm, and we looked at a couple different ways to program the technique in Mathematica. That concludes this video. Thanks for your time.